Thank you. I call the member for Dunkley. Thank you, Deputy. The question is that the motion be agreed to. I call the member for Dunkley. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Um, I rise today to speak in support of a motion in acknowledging the International Day of the Girl Child. Um, I'm very proud to do so to support my friend and colleague, the member for Jagger Jagger, um, and the seconder, uh, the um, member for Lawler. I was going to say the member for Ryan, but that's her surname, the member for Lawler. Um, because I'm part of a party that is absolutely committed to gender equality. Um, I am extremely proud to be standing here today as the first woman to represent an electorate named after a pioneering unionist feminist named Louisa Dunkley, who at the turn of last century not only led a successful campaign for equal pay for women in the Commonwealth Public Service Act, but was known to be one of the leading forces internationally for feminism and for equality within the union movement and the suffragette movement. Um, it is somewhat surprising perhaps then that it's taken so long for a woman to represent the electorate named after Louisa Dunkley. Um, but I can tell this House that people in my community are very, very proud to live in an electorate named after a woman that fought for equality for everyone. Uh, because as she said, equal pay is not just about equality for the women that work day by day, side by side with the men. It's also about properly valuing the work that both men and women do. And that's something that we continue to strive for. In the short time since I have been the member for Dunkley, I have come across so many amazing young women and girls who are already leaders in their community. And young women and girls sometimes that have been facing what others might see as insurmountable barriers to success, um, but it is actually those barriers that are encouraging them and inspiring them to make their voices heard. Um, in my community, we are honouring um, International Day of the Girl Child, not just today, uh, but every day, by trying to support those girls who want to be leaders of the future. Plan International's research has shown that 91 per cent of girls and young women 91 per cent express a strong desire to be leaders to tackle the biggest challenges of our time. And we all know, or most of us know, that one of the biggest challenges of our time is climate change. And one only has to talk to school children to understand that they know that that's the biggest challenge of their time and the future. So it's probably no surprise that the Plan International Research also talks about young people wanting to have their voices heard on climate change. Um, we have a parliamentary Friends um, of Tackling Climate Change group today, which heard from experts about the impact of climate change and health. Um, and all of those experts, who coincidentally were all women, um, which was a terrific thing to see, spoke about young people and young girls' desire to have their voices heard, to have the future protected. And that's what International Day of the Girl Child wants to do. The United Nations um, Girls' Education Institute talks about the um, inspiration for unscripted and unstoppable. The theme of um, today is to equip girls with the power, knowledge and space to voice their passions and concerns. The global community must create more opportunities for girls' voices to be heard and safe spaces for their participation in decision making. Leading change for girls is our collective responsibility. No one in this place could put it any better. It is our collective responsibility. We must all work together. Tegan Kynes in my electorate, who I met at Elizabeth Murdoch College and then again at a fundraiser for cancer, is a survivor of childhood leukaemia. She's 16 years old and her ambition is to be the captain of the Australian cricket team. Chloe Kopek is a young woman from my electorate, 16 years old again, who contacted me to say, can I please come and do work experience in your office and come to Canberra because I want to be the Prime Minister of Australia. I want my voice to be heard. These are young girls who are so inspiring and they deserve to have their names and their voices heard in this parliament. Um, over the weekend, I took um, the children of friends of mine on tours of this place, of Parliament House, um, and the girls were all inspired standing in front of Julia Gillard's portrait. And um, I found myself saying, that's the first woman to ever be the Prime Minister of Australia, and so far the only woman. And the young girls looked at me in surprise. And I know that with their support and our support for them, 
there are going to be female prime ministers in the future, um, and there are going to be female leaders. I'm very confident that a number of them are going to come from Dunkley. Order, and the question is the motion.